So if Slay the Spire is the objective goat of uh, deck builders, then I think Monster Train might be my personal favorite. And in this video, I'm just going to play through a run and explain why and tell you what it's about. So off the bat, there's already elements that, that I love and that I'm obsessed with in games, which is variety. And I suppose with card games, it's synergies. Uh, you have your primary clan uh, and your secondary clan or your allied clan. You basically choose two clans that you're going to go into the run with. And these clans determine what cards you get. Um, so your spells and your units. Um, and they can also determine what relics you get or artifacts in this game. But on top of that, you also get to choose between two clan heroes. So for example, with the Hornbreaker Prince here, your unique card, which you get, I believe, three or four copies of in the game, uh, is a torch, which is just a spell that deals two damage. Um, if you choose to go with the Shardtail Queen, then you're going to be focusing on imps, and so you'll get a Queen's Impling, and you'll build around imps. The same goes for every other clan in the game. I haven't leveled them all up, um, but they each have their own unique spell, and and uh, the heroes themselves uh, have a use in the game as well. You can upgrade the heroes, which I really like. I'll show that in a sec as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show that already off the bat, this game promotes a ton of synergy and a ton of variety. So let's get into the run. So I thought for the first run, I'd just go with the clans that uh, beginners would have unlocked or that they'd most likely play with, which is the the red class, I'll call it, and the green class. So we're going to be focusing on rage, DPS, but also healing at the same time. Um, so the gist is that uh, you just go through a world like or a map like you would any other uh, roguelike or deck builder, uh, and along the way, you build your deck, get level ups, upgrades, all the good stuff that, that we like. Um, so these are the uh, artifacts in the game. They're just, you know, permanent upgrades that will carry throughout your whole run. Um, what are we going to take here? Uh, I think I'll take Pyre Health uh, just to ensure survivability. Your Pyre up here, which is your health, um, once they get... I'll show you in the game, but once they get to the top of the train, they'll start doing damage to that. But your Pyre also has attack power to prevent them from killing it. And this is what I mean by you can upgrade your primary clan's leader. For now, I think I'm going to take Slay, which is every time uh, Hornbreaker Prince deals a killing blow, he'll get 10 plus power, which is perfect. So we're on like the uh, increasingly harder difficulties. So uh, I'm going to take uh, a bonus here, which is um, 15 shards, which just makes the game harder, but I'll get an extra artifact. I think what I'll take here is the Conscious Coals. Um, so every time units enter my train, uh, there's a chance that they'll be dazed, which I think is very useful. Before every fight, you have a chance to upgrade the difficulty uh, to gain an extra reward, which I think is really a really cool thing. I don't often do this every time uh, the reward is kind of too challenging or maybe my deck can't really handle it very well. Um, but uh, I think this one should be fine. Uh, because we're going to get 1-1 one, one units on every floor of our train at the start of battle. Uh, and the additional reward isn't the greatest at 75 coins, but it's it's fine. So this is the battlefield of Monster Train. What happens is uh, in every battle, units from the, your enemies will enter a floor of your train. Generally, it's the bottom floor and they'll work their way up to your pyre. And then they'll start to attack your pyre. We chose the modifier that spawns them on all our floors. Um, so I'm pretty certain that our pyre is going to take damage. Uh, this turn, but that's okay. We'll get some extra coin for it. But this is your uh, hero who will spawn in your hand at the start of all uh, at the start of every combat, and he costs zero, so you can just play him. It's very risky to play him now without some sort of help because he only has six HP, which means he'll just get destroyed by all four of them. So one thing we can do, uh, but essentially in this game, you have two two different types of cards. You have spells and you have units. So you start off each combat with train stewards. Um, this is your deck here. So these are spells. If they're not a unit, they're a spell. Um, and they'll just do various different things to help you. Uh, and then you have your units as well. So right now, the only units we have are the Hornbreaker Prince uh, and our Train Stewards. You'll notice as well that each floor has uh, floor capacity. Um, so my Hornbreaker Prince is two capacity. Uh, so we can put him here, which we will do. And it'll take up two of the floor's capacity. Uh, I put him here for a reason. I don't. He's going to die if I put him on the bottom floor. Uh, so... Put him on the third, and we can do some damage here. Uh, and then we can put a train steward here as well um, to protect even more damage. And now these two top units will die. All right, so I fucked up and I put a train steward here without thinking. But that's okay, he's going to die. It doesn't really matter, it's just a train steward. Uh, but these two top guys are going to die, and that's what matters. 
Uh, now I have the game on ultra speed. If you go into your settings, you can change the speed. I have it on super ultra, sorry, not ultra, super ultra. Um, just so everything goes fast. Uh, but have it on whatever speed you want, doesn't matter. Uh, so really, uh, we should be dealing with the floor that we can actually do things on, which is the top floor. Our Horde Breaker Prince is incredibly important, so we don't want him to die. Um, so what we can do is things like this, which will give our Horde Breaker Prince 10 armor and stop these guys from attacking. Or sorry, stop them from doing that much more damage. Um, but I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll use our spells just to get rid of a couple of them. Um, that'll greatly help us. It'll even keep our train steward alive. We can give our train steward 10 armor as well, even though he's already at the front. Uh, and that'll mean that the top, well, the, the front two units die. So as you can see, all the, all the enemy units attack first, which means these guys die way before they can get any damage off. So you saw there our Pyre took some damage, uh, but because it has attack power, the enemies died as well. So whenever you've got through uh, normal combat, then the boss will come into your uh, train. Generally, they have to fight their way through every unit that you've placed all the way to the top of the train. Um, but because we entered the fight with a modifier, we only have units at the top, and we don't have that many units to begin with anyway. So what I might do is... Uh, see if we can save... Train shield, yep, we can. Uh, and I'll keep applying armor to our main guy. Uh, and then this is another spell. So this is where kind of the synergies come in. This is a, uh, we'll call it the green guy spell, the uh, Awoken spell. Um, and yeah, I can apply it to my, my prince here. So on this turn, um, we have no units on the second floor, which sucks, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. I, I I just want to make sure that my prince is going to survive and deal enough damage to the point where he can uh, kill the boss. This train steward is just just uh, you know a line of defense. So when they when they enter the floor, uh, it'll tell you how much damage your guys are going to take. It'll tell you how much damage that they're going to take. And as we can see here, the boss is going to die, and my prince is only going to take sixteen damage. So we don't need to do anything. You know, uh, the the victory is already guaranteed. Beautiful. And after, of course, you'll get your rewards, gold, and then you get to choose uh, between various rewards for the character that you're playing, uh, being both your primary clan and your allied clan. Uh, just like Slay the Spire, you don't want to bloat your deck. Uh, and it's very easy in this game to uh, focus your deck down. You get multiple opportunities to, to uh, remove cards from your deck. So we're, we're going to skip this one. Maybe we get a better Awoken award, though. I think Glimmer is pretty good. Um, as like small AoE plus healing. Spikes is also good on units with a lot of health, um, plus they get four attack. And then you continue to go. So as you can tell, oh, very quick. Uh, as you can tell, the map is pretty big. Uh, and then you get down to what is number seven or eight, something like that, floor seven or eight, something like that. Uh, and then you fight the final boss. But for now we're here. So on every every uh, move down of, of level, you get to choose between various uh, rewards. So for example, and you can see all the rewards as they come up as well. So when we move to the next level, we'll get an artifact chest and we'll get to choose between restoring 20 health or you know picking up that artifact. And that's the important thing about your decisions in this game is you need to choose what path am I going to take? So what I really want to do is get an Awoken unit because they're generally tanky. So, um, but what I can do now is I'm going to remove a card. Uh, this goes from... 50 to 75 to 100 or 50 to 100, something like that. Um, so what we're going to remove is a train steward. I don't want train stewards. Uh, they just kind of bloat the deck and you can upgrade them. In fact, I'll, I'll show you, you can upgrade them. I'll keep one train steward because they can be pretty useful and 3315 or 1533 is, is, is pretty good. So we, we can keep that, but I'll remove uh, another one. So as I said before, it's pretty easy to kind of cater your deck to what you want to do. Um, this is the unit I was, or one of the units I was looking for. So this guy's going to be very, very, very tanky. Um, and if we can get some things to heal him up as well, then it'll be very useful. Sweep is AOE. It'll do three damage to all the units on the floor. Um, but I think we just want, we just want tank right now. So this is one of those floors where I generally would turn on the 
the additional challenge because I want another unit. I want to draft another unit because we don't have many. And as I continue to remove train stewards out of my deck, we want more units to replace them. So we messed up, but because our pyre does damage, we were able to overcome that boss fight. And I suppose if you make a mistake, there's always that fallback is that your pyre will deal damage and kill the enemies for you. So, uh, you know, it's not always fatal, but it will be fatal later on. So I'm glad that we made that mistake uh, early on. Um, so I'm absolutely going to take 10 rage here. Uh, I think rage, I mean, rage is just your way of, of uh, buffing up your damage. Um, and then for this, we didn't get, uh, hmm, what did we get? I think Glimmer is okay here. But now, now we get the unit. And this is, again, this is what we really want because we were running out. And I think this time we'll take some AoE. This is one of the unique events where you get to build a card, which I think is really cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll... We already got a Rage card and we don't have any regen right now. So let's get some regen. Um, and it'll be a buff effect. And it will increase the capacity that we have on that floor. All right, so it's a spell that... Applies for regen, the unit will gain 10 attack and 1 capacity on the floor, which is fine. So this is one of the boss fights where you don't get to choose whether you turn on the challenge or not. They just come in with their own um, unique uh, ability. Enemy unit enter with 5 armor. All good. Let's see how we can deal with this. So immediately I'm noticing something that we can do, um, which is we can chuck this guy down. And he spawns with uh, 60 health missing, essentially. But we can use this, which will deal five times the amount of health that it heals, aka 50, to the front unit, insta-killing the front unit. And then, of course, we will put down our prince, and we'll give our we'll give our tank, essentially, the regen. Um, so whenever healed as well, since he has regen, whenever healed, he'll gain three spikes every time he regens, and he'll regen for, four, for the next four turns. One of the unique aspects of these boss fights as well is they'll sit outside the train and they'll do something specific on... I feel like it's a random floor every turn. Uh, and so sometimes they'll put bombs in the train, sometimes they'll put units in the train, and they'll just fly up and down. So here, what we can do is... I mean, I think we just get another unit set up on the floor above. Uh, and I think we just buff up our tank even more with more armor. And then uh, we can heal our guys and deal damage to them as well. And now they'll all die. Perfect. Uh, and we'll put our tanky train steward there as well. So yeah, I think the floors are random for the boss to go to. So for this turn, I... In a situation like this, I feel like I want to be thinking, alright, how am I going to kill this front unit here so that my guys can deal as much damage to the boss that's behind them? And so that will happen. If there's no units on the floor or you defeat all the units on the floor, then they will do damage to the enemy behind, which in this case is the boss. I don't know how I'm going to do it this time. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to kill that, that front unit. Um, even if we apply uh, root seeds twice. So I think I just want to focus on what's going to happen down here. Uh, we can use that, instantly kill the front enemy. Now they'll both die, which is great. Uh, I'm going to apply some armor there as well. Uh, and then we can kind of buff up our tank on this floor a little bit. This unit will surpass and go to the next floor, but I'm okay with that. I should be able to deal with it next turn. Okay, so the problems this turn is that this guy is going to go up and attack our pyre, but he's only going to deal two damage to it before he dies, which is totally fine by me. So let's ignore that. That's not a big problem. And let's focus on the fact that our main guy is about to die. Uh, mainly because the boss is going to deal damage and the front enemy is going to deal damage. Uh, now, we don't have the ability to instantly kill the front person anymore, but we do have the ability to apply some armor and that will negate uh, the boss's attack and the front enemy unit's attack. And the reason I took this uh, dazed is showing off now because this guy is dealing 16 damage, essentially. Uh, and so even if we put that armor on, um, we'd still be in a little bit of trouble, but now we well, now we are not. And what we can do is more spikes on this guy, more armor on our front guy, more damage on our front guy, and we can do two more damage to the boss. As I said, this is the final wave, and what will happen on the final wave is the boss will move from floor to floor and go up. Uh, this case, we're 
in a really good spot because our tank is going to take most of the damage from the boss. Um, so the boss, the way it works is the boss will deal nine damage to the front um, front unit until it's dead. But all the while, our uh, Hornbreaker Prince is also doing damage. Um, so very, very, very useful thing is uh, you know placing your units correctly on each floor. Because if our Hornbreaker Prince was in front, that would mean that we're not doing... Well, we're going to lose the bulk of our damage very quickly. Um, but we can also do two of these, which will do massive damage as well. And, you know, we don't have to do anything. We've already won the won the, the boss fight, but yeah. So you do get cards that say consume, and consume is essentially uh, exhaust from, from Slay the Spire. So, And this is something that you'll get after a few fights in the game as well. Your ability to have more energy per turn, have an extra card draw per turn and or have extra capacity. I think capacity we're totally okay with right now. Judging off that last boss fight, we were also totally okay with the amount of draw we had. And so I think I'll just get some more energy so we can do more each turn. This is one of those choices that I think is very obvious right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove a couple cards from our deck being these torches. We can upgrade these so you can allow them to deal like 20 plus damage. Um, but I don't really need to. I feel like most of our damage is coming from our units, um, not our spells. And then we can duplicate a card as well. So I think what I might duplicate is... Uh, we don't need to duplicate any of our units. I think instead we'll duplicate uh, Old Magic, which is the card we, we made. So, I mean, the choice is pretty obvious for this one. We're going to restore some fire health, and we're also going to buff our spells a little bit. Um, so, plus 20 magic power and consume, I think is fine. Uh, and we'll take that for Glimmer. Um, I think that's totally okay. Ember Drain. Wait, who has Ember Drain? Oh, apply one Ember Drain to the attacks unit. Oh, shit. Oh, well, this isn't good, is it? Two Ember. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. We can we can figure this out. We rage. I think we just rage here. Uh, yeah, kill the front guy. Uh, apply regen down here. Let's do that. Do that, apply more armor. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're figuring we're figuring this out as we go. This Ember Drain is not something I expected, but we are figuring it out as we go. How much damage is the boss gonna take? 406. Can we buff those numbers up a bit? With rage and armor, we absolutely can. Um in fact, I think. I'll do that, 600, that's brilliant. Uh, we can even do that as well to do more. Uh, plus 10 attack, even more, plus two attack, even more, 666, oh boy. Now the boss is gonna be very low once he gets to the top floor, which was our main floor to begin with. Uh, we don't have enough for lethal, but I think after applying some rage, we should, 190, we should, right? Um, we've got to be very careful though. So I think obviously we use the zero, zero cost spell to get us even more damage on the boss. Um, and then we only need, yeah, we only need a little bit more damage. So beautiful. Uh, so before I spend any money upgrading any units, which is very powerful. As you can see, these upgrades can be quite insane. I do want to check out what artifacts there are. Rage Not Decaying works perfectly with our build. That is actually phenomenal. Um, and I'm okay with units costing two less Ember. So I think we'll get both. Uh, and we can even spend 20 gold on a couple upgrades here as well. So in terms of 25 health, do we, who do we want to put it on? I think I'm totally okay with putting it on uh, our, our rage, our rage giver, I suppose. And we can give him 
uh, plus 10 attack as well. All right. This is the final boss fight. Uh, so the first spell card played each turn gets consumed, which we have to be very careful of. I have to be very conscious of that. All right. So we can't heal anyone. Uh, what we can do is give this guy some more attack. Um, and let's just get rid of the uh, cards that are going to be a nuisance to us as well. So this is one of those times where, uh, again, we ha I kind of have to rely on our Pyre dealing damage just because we built kind of shittily. We haven't really played this perfectly. So uh, I'm going to do my best um, to uh, give ourselves a chance, but something tells me it won't matter. And this is where we lose anyway. I don't think our Pyre can take much more damage. These They're all rooted, which is really... Ooh, that's big. Oh, oh that's huge. That might have just saved us. Uh, this will also save us. No, it will save us a little bit. We have to focus on the fact that we're about to lose this guy as well. Giving him more damage isn't going to help us at all. Our Pyre's going to take damage if we leave this in our hand as well, which sucks. I think... Probably the best play is to just leave Hornbreaker Prince down here to do his thing. It sucks that we lose this guy, but it is what it is. We need to make sure our Pyre doesn't take uh, much damage. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to solve that problem. Or not very well, at least. I wonder if uh, our champion dies here. No, he stays alive. Interesting. So this is where, obviously, we do this. Oh, that's that will be consumed. Okay, so instead... Because I want to keep these. I know these are going to be crucial. Instead, uh, let's apply some rage. Uh, and then we don't get consumed. And instead, uh, we can do that. Hornbreaker stays alive. And we just get rid of... Get rid of the purge cards. They continue to remain rooted, which is very, very interesting. Uh, let's begin applying some armor. Uh, and then... With that guy to the front, I suppose. Deal damage to the front guy. Apply more armor. Move that. Our prince stays alive. Okay, so again, our prince remains alive. This guy, who is a big part of our defense, does not, which is a big, big, big problem. And our only play is to do that, and luckily that keeps him alive. Uh, but it might not keep our pyre alive. Oof. So this is unfortunately the last turn. The boss is in full swing now, and I'm not entirely convinced this is where we this is where we come out on top. We're about to lose our big tank uh, and our main guy. Uh, and we're just going to take some pyre damage as well. We have four health in our pyre, and we have one train steward left. Well, you know what? It's been a pretty good run, but we fell short at the final hurdle. Uh, put that down to me not being super experienced in games like this, but I think this game is definitely generally my favorite because it's a lot more forgiving. 
Um, but there's still a lot of depth to it and a lot that you can, a lot that you can learn and, and build from. So, but yeah, that was Monster Train. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. I wanted to show you one more thing, which is the uh, logbook here. Um, this will show you your progress. Um, and if you are a completionist like me, there's a lot to fill out here. There's a lot to fill out in this logbook. You can go up to the 25th level of Covenant, um, which I suppose is this game's version of Ascension from Slay the Spire. You have challenges to get uh, wins with every combination of possible class. Um, you can get mastered versions of each card. Um, so for example, my Hellhorned Prince's card has a gold border uh, and you can get mastered versions of each of the cards um, if you're a real completionist. Um, and of course, each uh, clan has its own level as well um, that you can level up and you'll unlock more cards from doing that. 125 artifacts in the game. Of course, you have non-class specific artifacts, but uh, you have class specific artifacts as well, um, which is awesome. These are some extra challenges. Uh, so three daily challenges in a row, Hell Rush five times. No idea what that is, but uh, yeah, and all these others. And they'll give you uh, special card backs as well or card frames. And I thought it would be worth showing you um, the Last Divinity DLC. Uh, uh, I haven't really looked into this or what exactly this is about yet, um, but there is card mastery involved in this. Uh, obviously a new class as well, which I haven't played much of, but yeah, it just even more completion for you to, for you to dive into. But yeah, that was Monster Train. Uh, again, one of my favorites. Uh, I really enjoy it. Um, if you enjoyed watching, please subscribe. Uh, I hear that liking the video helps the algorithm. I don't know. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. And uh, yeah, see you later.